Dive into the history of the state of Iowa, and with that, we uh, turn to Professor Jeff Stein with this morning's edition of Iowa Almanac. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am doing very well. Good morning to you. Yeah, we're, this morning we're talking about uh, the pressure that college students uh, go through, especially when they first get to school to try to fit in. And I'm sure that you have uh, you went through it when you went to school. I know we did when we went to school. Well, this is pretty exciting, Professor, because we had the president of the organization that you're going to be talking about in studio with us in our living room, Sue Baker, not too long ago. So it's fun to then catch up with the wonderful history of this wonderful women's organization with you this morning. Absolutely right, you know, and again, I had the experience as a college student, as a college professor, sororities, fraternities, getting selected for just the right one. Well, back in 1869, now that's 150 years ago, sororities were not common. In fact, at that point, just after the end of the Civil War, there was only one sorority in existence in the whole country. It's now known as Pi Beta Phi. Well, at Iowa Wesleyan College in Mount Pleasant, there was a new chapter of that sorority 150 years ago, and seven close friends were among those who wanted to be among the first members. And then the invitations went out, and not all of the seven were included oh. and being asked to join. <laughs> That's not always a thing that's good among friends. I, in fact, I can kind of divide you in, in a certain way. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's a little awkward as you look around right. to see who got the call and who didn't. But these seven handled it in a very unique way. They didn't want anything to come between their friendship, and so they decided to form their own sisterhood. Hattie Briggs, Francis Rhodes, those were the two who came up with the idea. They soon enlisted the others, Allie Bird, Ella Stewart, Mary Allen, Suella Pearson, and Alice Coffin. They formed their own group and they called it the PEO Sisterhood. And for more than a century after it was founded, the meaning of PEO was an official secret. If you were, would ask a member, what does it stand for? They'd say, well, we can't tell you that. <laughs> Finally, about a decade ago, 2008, in fact, the group's website did confirm that the letters PEO stand for Philanthropic Educational Organization. Which makes perfect sense because that's what yeah. they've been involved with in the very beginning. And Absolutely. amazing, it was a secret for that long of a period of time. Who keeps secrets like that Nobody. these days? Yeah. But uh, that original membership of seven women on one campus in Iowa has certainly grown, as you no doubt know from the conversation with the current leader, nearly quarter of a million members in chapters throughout the U.S. and Canada, and the headquarters of the whole thing is in Des Moines. It was the second sorority ever to be founded in the country, and now it sponsors six international projects to help women with educational goals. And it all started when seven young women decided not to join an Iowa Wesleyan sorority that wouldn't take their friends as well. They chose friendship over membership on this date uh, 150 years ago, on this date in 1869. How about that? Uh, Professor, were you involved in any fraternities when you were going to school? No, who would have me? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, why set yourself up for failure like that? No, I was uh, I was uh, devoted to the uh, fraternity, as it were, of working in radio, and so that didn't leave a lot of time for other things. Yeah, Jackie, what about you? And any sororities at all when you were going to school? Uh, when I, our theater group just kind of considered ourselves our own little group. group. Uh, yeah. Plus, uh, there's still that what is that known as a white law or a blue law in the state that you can't have so many women living under the same house if you live in Florida because mm -hmm. it's considered a brothel, not a sorority. <laughs> so they weren't. They kind of they, put a uh, damper on They kind of put yet. a damper yeah. of things in, and if you attend uh, school in Florida, like I did for college, but it's absolutely incredible having the current president Sue Baker in joining us in studio, mm -hmm. talking about yes, 150 years, which is amazing, uh, with an organization still going very strong. Two chapters, well, multiple chapters, but two. Uh, here locally if people want more information and they she mentioned there's a huge event coming up this summer that they're all coming together here in Des Moines to celebrate but uh, current members being you know our very own governor Kim Reynolds mm -hmm. Senator Joni Ernst right. and beyond and all the great work that they continue to do to give scholarships to young women so that they can continue to uh, follow their dreams and 
become anything they'd like in our great country. So that's uh, pretty amazing to know what started 150 years ago, still going strong for women to this day. Great. Now, if people want to go back and revisit what we talked about here this morning, how can they do so, Professor? IowaAlmanac.com, Lou. That's got this story and all the ones we've talked about. Also, Twitter and Instagram, at Iowa Almanac. But on the web, it's IowaAlmanac.com. Sounds great. All right, buddy, you uh, try to stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow morning. I'll be right here. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Professor. All right. Seven